This is America and the World is on location in the Kingdom of Morocco. It's a country of 36 million people in northern Africa, located on both the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The people are warm and welcoming, the country is safe, and nobody complains about the weather. Morocco has it all. Mountains, beaches, the desert, historic and famous cities such as Casablanca, Marrakesh, Fez, and Tangier, and the capital city, of course, Rabat. On this program, we'll delve into Morocco's never-ending opportunities for tourists, and believe me, we've only scratched the surface. There's so much more. We got some background information and suggestions from the Director General of the Moroccan National Tourism Office. So who comes to Morocco as a tourist, and why do they come? I have a simple answer and a longer one. The shortest one is everyone. We almost uh, welcome all, our, all over the, count, all the world, Australia, Chile, everywhere in the world we had visitors. But the main, uh, the, comp the longest uh, answer, the main uh, visitor is mainly Europe. We mm. have four big markets that are uh, important to us. We have France, number one, Spain. Number two, you have UK, United Kingdom, and Germany. And for these countries, I'll take Spain and France, we are their first destination outside Europe. Oh. We are a very important destination as well to France and Spain. And this is four main countries in Europe. They account for around 60% of our, of our visitors. And we have two other uh, major uh, growth, growth countries that come into Morocco for the last 10 years. First one is China. Ah. Uh, we're, we're, we're witnessing double-digit growth on China for the last 10, 10 years. And second one, and this is our fifth market, very important, is the US. Uh -huh. We almost have half a million coming from United States to Morocco. Uh -huh. And let's say we doubled this number the last five years. We had uh, year-on-year year growth of 16% from this market, which is huge in the, in the area. Mm -hmm. So one of our flag on our, our star market today is the, is the US market. So you have history, you have culture, beaches, mountains, desert, everything is here. You huh? mentioned it all. <laughs> I mean, it's really all amazing. Almost. Almost? <laughs> almost. <laughs> Let us do this. So you take off the jacket and the tie, and you become our tour guide, all right? You are the tour guide. And we have, let's say, two or three days to spend here in Morocco. Paint some pictures for us. Where would you take us? What Good. would you show us? And this is typically what I say to, to my, my family, my friends, and uh -huh. this is my job as well. So I'll, this, is, this is a question that, is, uh, that has a million answers, depends <laughs> on the person, depends on... But typically what I say to, um, to someone who want to discover Morocco, there is some destinations that are unique worldwide. Uh, entry is Marrake Marrakesh. This is one of the most vibrant cities you can imagine. We have everything is, is in this city, plus an energy that is unique to this place. And everything we can imagine about Morocco, we'll de discover it there. Agadir, if you're, uh, if you're a beach lover, this is a kind of, uh, for, this, is, this is one of the most beautiful beaches we have in Morocco, in the region of Agadir. Plus, we have a landscape behind Agadir, the, the, the Amazir culture and landscape that is behind, which is, unique, it's untouched places, it's just fantastic. If you want to have a view on the, on few centuries before, just walk in Fez. In Fez, uh -huh. you, if you, if, if we can Photoshop and, and, and just take away some signs of modernity, which can be just a phone sign or something, you can be any time in two or three or 10, ten centuries before. It's like a window in history. It's an in, it's untouched. Uh, Medina, and you feel the war, you feel the depth of this culture in when you walk around in Fez. This is where the first university that was uh, uh, built by a woman, it was in Fez centuries ago. So you'll be amazed how uh, how deep connected to the history you've been Fez. 
Rabat is something to discover definitively because it's a crossroad on all Morocco. It's the capital, but also it's uh, it's one of the beautiful city we'll have, and we have one of the best golf in Morocco. It's in Dar Salaam, and I know how how important uh, golf is in our offer, but also for some visitors specifically from the United States. We have in Morocco over 42 golfers, 14 only in Marrakech. And the beautiful, the most beautiful one for in the region is in Rabat in Dar es Salaam. So it's definitely something to visit. In Tangier, which is it's a city that is overseen Europe and seen the Gibraltar, Detroit, where where the, the history was made there, where uh, where uh, U.S. has uh, U.S., Germany, France, and Spain has very profound historical uh, roots there. The last centuries. And uh, the last one, if you're flying back or to Morocco from the US, you will definitely be by Casablanca, which is one of our star brands worldwide. It's obviously, people think about the movie of Casablanca, yeah, the magic sure. of uh, Humphrey Gobert, but Casablanca is mo much more than that. Casablanca is, is first a cosmopolitan city. It's almost 6 million inhabitants, so it's a vibrant city. It's by the coast. So it, it has a little bit of Miami. It's had a little bit of New York and Dubai. It's in crossroad on, on these moods. And it's, uh, it's a city that offer a complete different uh, feeling of another way of another facet of Morocco, which is much more economic driven. This is a vibrant city. This is a living city. And it's just fantastic. Ah. So it's more, much more than three places. But <laughs> this is all this you can do it in three days. You paint some beautiful pictures for us. Uh, as we kind of head to the finish line now, uh, if you look right into this camera over my shoulder, and you were to give a, a 30 second uh, commercial, 15, 20, oh. 30 second commercial about inviting people to come to Morocco. Just talk you're, right to the folks you're at You're generous home. because in the digital now we have five seconds, second second, 30 second is a good one. Yeah. Well, what I say is that uh, Morocco is first secure country. It's completely safe country for the visitors and it's a unique experience, it's vibrant. It's, you will be amazed how people will welcome you and share their culture, and this is a land of uh, this is a land of creation, land of inspiration, and this is a kingdom of uh, of light that will that will uh, welcome you uh, in a very 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 unique way and offer you an experience that is incomparable in uh, in in any region around. <laughs> Thank Beautiful. You. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Coming up right after the break, we'll visit the American legation in Tangier, meet the organizer of one of the world's most celebrated music festivals, and take a tour of the capital city of Rabat. This is America and the World Visits the Kingdom of Morocco. Underwriting for This is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. The Republic of Uzbekistan. The Sultanate of Oman. The Kingdom of Morocco. The National Association for Children of Addiction. Faces and Voices of Recovery. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust and the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy. A wonderful secret, especially for American tourists, is the American legation in Tangier. We paid a visit to the original home of the U.S. government's representation in Morocco, and it dates back some 200 years. The American legation in Tangier, right? Exactly, yes. Let me just take a second and tell you about who we are, Please. right? There's a museum here, there's a cultural and a community center here, and there's also a research center. So I like to tell people that there's something for everyone here. Um, the museum has an incredible collection of both American and Moroccan art and is dedicated to telling the story of the American-Moroccan friendship over the last 200 plus years. Um, it's absolutely incredible and definitely worth visiting. 
visiting. We also have a big research library here, over 10,000 rare books, rare maps, um, and because this is Tangier, the ultimate international city, they're in English, Arabic, French, Spanish, you name it. Um, and so we host scholars who come here to do research in our library on Tangier, on Morocco, on Moroccan-American relations, and we hold a number of conferences. Um, and in addition to that, the museum, the research center, we're also a community center and an outreach center. Ah. We take really seriously our role as, um, as a founding member of the Medina of Tangier. Um, so we work on cultural preservation, on historical preservation, and on outreach to members of the Medina. You used the word Medina a couple of times. I did, yes. Define that for the, the folks. The Medina is the old city of Tangier. It's all of the part of Tangier that lies within the original walls. Um, and it is the most historical part of Tangier, where you found all of the old diplomatic legations when Tangier was an international city. Um, and it is an incredible place to visit. When we use that word legation, yes. t talk a little bit about the history sure. so Americans know. Morocco is the United States' oldest friend. Say it again. Morocco is the United <laughs> yeah, States' yeah. oldest friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in 1777, the Sultan extended his hand to the fledgling United States. Now remember, this is only a year and a half after the Declaration of Independence. Right. And it's before the Constitution was even written. The Sultan says, you, United States of America, please come and trade with us. We will protect your ships from the pirates. We will facilitate your trade. Wow. And in 1821, um, the Sultan's son, decides to give a building in the Medina, the old city of Tangier, to the United States government to facilitate official contact, diplomatic contact. So he gave this as a gift to the US government 200 years ago. This is our bicentennial. Ah. We're very excited oh, about that. congratulations. Yes, thank you. So we're in probably the first diplomatic or maybe one of the first diplomatic missions in the United, uh, of the United States? You are in the oldest continuously owned diplomatic mission of the United States, wow. gifted in 1821 and property of the United States until now. And then in the 1970s, a group of fans of Morocco and of the US and of the joint relationship got together and said, we need to preserve this building and its mission for, for posterity. And not only do we want it to be preserved, but we want it to live. And so they created TELIM, which is the Tangier American Legation Institute for Moroccan Studies. Um, and that is an NGO and organization, an NGO based in the U.S. that runs it to today. Ah. So it belongs to the U.S. government who leases it to us and then we take care of it and do all kinds of really interesting programming here. And you are the new uh, I'm the director. new resident director. I've been here for three whole weeks. Well, they are <laughs> lucky to have you. Actors, artists, producers, directors, musicians, and entrepreneurs are at the very heart of promoting Moroccan culture but the many satellite industries supporting that culture collectively play a key role in the life and economy of Morocco. I'm a politician, I'm a senator, um, I'm also an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a cultural activist, I'm, uh, I, I organize festivals, I do a lot of things in culture. And what has been the most important project in my life is in the cultural field. Mm -hmm. The festival I put up in 1998 called the Gnawa and World Music Festival in Isawira was the first free and open festival in Morocco. Imagine 500,000 people showing up in a city of 70,000 people. And it was not really something that was, we were used to in Morocco. And then, as the festival was based on a popular tradition, I started working on the power of this ancient music that came from sub-Saharan African countries. And wow. that's what really organized my, my path and my, my track in life and the way I started doing things and getting involved in cultural life and business and politics and, and so on. You're the president of a confederation. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, it's a new confederation that uh, is the Federation of Cultural and Creative Industries. It's a young federation that we started four years ago because 
of the experience I had putting up this festival 25 years ago and experiencing how tough it is to be a producer a private, in the private sector, I decided that it would be very interesting to work on organizing the ecosystem for other people working as me, as myself, in the private sector in the cultural field. So uh, we do a lot of work with the government. We do a lot of work on the legislative aspects. We do a lot of work to make evolve all the, the way the representation and the way public policies are constructed to help the sector emerge and become a very, very productive sector because it is a very important sector. Worldwide, it's the fifth sector that, is, that has the, 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 mo the best growth in, uh, economically because it creates a lot of jobs, it creates a lot of, a lot of economic uh, activity, Obviously, when you shoot movies and you bring 1,000 people working on a movie, obviously it's a lot of families that can benefit from this. Also, when you organize a festival that brings 500,000 people, you can imagine how the hotels, the restaurants, and all the, the shops can, can benefit from it. So we're talking about creative cultural entities, mm -hmm. a mass of them working together toward a new, a new horizon, huh? Uh, heading toward the finish line, uh, the role of women here, how do you see that changing here in Morocco? Well, it is changing first because it's in our constitution. We have a new constitution since 2011, and the 19th article of our constitution says that parity, gender equity, is an objective. So we have to work on every legislation we work on, on every, we have a, a gender equity budget. So it's, it's not something that is absolutely perfect right now because it's kind of work in progress, but it's an objective we are seriously working on, either in parliament, in government, but also in the private sector. We have a law that makes it, uh, that we, ha we have to have 30% of the board of directors that have to be women for uh, companies that uh, apply for uh, public finances. We have an objective to have 40% in 2025 and 50% by 2027. And also we have six women ministers in the government which is a good progress because we had only one in our last government. We have almost 25% of women in parliament, which is approximately the world average in parliaments in the world. But uh, we have put quotas in the House of Representatives to be sure that women will be there and women are doing a great job. And I am myself uh, the first woman that has been vice president of the Moroccan Senate. We never had a woman before. Uh, on the board of the Senate, and uh, I've been the only woman to chair plenary sessions, and I am the first woman in the Senate to chair the Commission of uh, uh, International Affairs, uh, Foreign Affairs, and uh, National Defense. So you're encouraged? Yes, I believe I am. Thank, Thank you, you for your visit. Thank, Thank you for you. the education. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In Rabat, the capital city, a must-visit is the Museum of History and Civilizations. Our incredibly knowledgeable and very personal guide, Rashid Kazbi, showed me around. One of the museum's prized possessions dates back 315,000 years. 315,000 years ago? Yes. <laughs> My word. The Roman Empire's influence on Morocco is evident in the magnificent collection of artifacts of Roman times. Wow, these are beautiful pieces, aren't they? Mm -hmm. huh? After a wonderful visit to the Museum of History and Civilizations, Rashid offered to show us some of the historic sites and modern landmarks of the capital city of Rabat. Rashid, you've brought me to a very special place. Tell me about it. Oh, uh, this is one of the highlights of the city, city of Rabat. It's called Shalla, and usually we call it Shalla Necropolis. A necropolis is like a burial 
uh, ground. Um, one of the dynasties, Moroccan dynasties, under the name of the Marinid, used it to bury uh, their people. That's why it is called Shala Necropolis. Um, and that's between the 13th and the 15th, uh, 15th century. Uh, this dynasty, of course, built a, a mosque inside it, inside, inside, inside Shalla, as well as a Quranic school. They were wonderful, they were famous for building these amazing madrasas where they would teach young uh, learners Quran uh, theology, the interpretation of the Quran. So there is a madrasa, there is a mosque, and there is a Roman site. So 40, uh, 40 uh, B BC, the, the Romans also settled here because, uh, you know, Rabat is very close to the ocean. So given its location, the Romans picked this place to have a little city inside the walls of, uh, of Shalla. Now you've taken me to another famous place here in Rabat. Yes, we are in Hassan, not Hassan, Hassan with a stress on S. It is a, um, a landmark or an icon of the city of Rabat. Uh, the mosque or the minaret was built in the uh, 12th century, uh, exactly 1186 to 1199. Unfortunately, the, the, uh, the, the sultan or the king who ordered its construction was uh, passed away before finishing it. That's why it is named uh, the Unfinished Mosque. Uh -huh. The original length or the original height was supposed to be uh, 86 meter high, but now it's just half. It's 44.5 meter high. <laughs> yeah, that's why they call it the unfinished mosque. Now this is special, huh? Yes, <laughs> this is uh, special because the, uh, this is where the uh, late king Hassan II is buried with his father, uh, who was a king, Muhammad V, also is buried. So uh, Hassan II, of course, was the king of Morocco between 1962 and 1999. So when he, he died, he passed away. He was buried next to his uh, father, Muhammad V, who was the king of Morocco, and the, the brother of Hassan II, uh, Abdullah. So the three of them are buried uh, inside this mausoleum. Now, I understand that in order to satisfy the people of Casablanca, mm -hmm. that the mausoleum is here, but the Hassan II mosque is in Casablanca. Tell me in just a few words a little bit about the mosque. The, the Hassan uh, II mosque in Casablanca was built between 80, uh, uh, 1987 and uh, 1993. So it took six years to build that beautiful uh, mosque by uh, a French architect, uh, Michel Pinsou, who, who kind of was the chief uh, architect besides Moroccan architects and craftsmen from the city of Fez uh, who contributed, and the city of Marrakech contributed in building that beautiful mosque of Casablanca. How many people could be worshipping there? Uh, the, the, the total of the people who can worship in the mosque, outside and inside, including men and women, one, 105. 105,000 wow. people can pray inside and outside the mosque of Casablanca. The minaret is the highest in the world with uh, 210 meters high, and it includes an elevator inside the minaret. Whoa. And the ceiling opens electrically and shuts electrically to ventilate and to have the sun comes inside the, the, the mosque of uh, Hassan II of Casablanca. And my understanding is that it's built out over the ocean, the water. Absolutely, one third of it is built on the ocean, and it is an inspiration from the Quran, which says the God's throne was in the ocean. So it's kind of an inspiration from the Quran. So I gathered that on a Friday prayer, mm -hmm. uh, midday, or early afternoon, maybe 25,000 people would be there worshiping, like on a regular Friday, huh? Oh, on a regular Friday, yeah, you are right, like something like between 20,000 and 30,000, because, because people come all over Casablanca, because the, the imam of the mosque has a wonderful uh, enchanting voice, so people love to go and attend the, the, the sermon, Friday sermon, in that special mosque. So, we're going to go across the street from the mausoleum and the mosque, and you're going to point out, I understand, mm -hmm. something that shows modern Morocco. Absolutely. We're going to see how Rabat is metamorphosing. It's changing. So now modern history, huh? Mm -hmm. What are we looking at? 
we are, uh, Rabat is a city which is going a lot of uh, ongoing urbanization. What we are seeing here is Le Grand Théâtre de Rabat, the, uh, the big theater of Rabat, or the Opera House. It was designed uh, to be one of the latest works of the late Zaha Mohammed Hadid, who passed away um, four or five years ago. She is a British uh, Iraqi designer who designed this beautiful uh, shape of a whale, okay, to be the, uh -huh. the theater of Rabat. Okay, it's, it's, it is very futuristic in terms of, of, of architecture. Its capacity is 2,050 people can watch or attend events inside inside the opera house or inside the Grand Théâtre of Rabat. Behind it, what you see is one of another landscape, but it is more for business. It's Mohammed the Sixth uh, Tower. It's going to be the highest building in Africa, and 75% of the work is already com accomplished. There are 800 people who are working. Uh, in shifts of day and night to finish that, 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 that tower that's going to be another landscape, of course, of robots. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, or our YouTube channel, This Is America TV, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Underwriting for This Is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C., the Republic of Uzbekistan, the Sultanate of Oman, the Kingdom of Morocco, the National Association for Children of Addiction, Faces and Voices of Recovery, the Forerunner Foundation, the Rotondaro Family Trust, and the Embassy Series, Uniting People Through Musical Diplomacy. <laughs>